Hey there, welcome back. This video is the third video in a series on masking. The first two videos go over how to determine whether or not masking is needed for air or bone conduction threshold testing. We're using the same hearing profile from the first two videos, so be sure to check those out if you haven't already. In this video, we're going over how to effectively mask when finding air conduction thresholds. We've already decided that we need to mask at 4,000 and 8,000 Hertz because of the level of the air conduction stimulus in the left ear might have been loud enough to be heard through bone conduction in the right ear. So we need to cover up or mask that right ear so it can't hear the sound that is crossing over from the left side. Think of it like this. Why do people put a white noise machine in a baby's room? Besides the fact that some people find white noise extremely soothing, it also helps cover up sounds coming into that room from other places. Those sounds lose some energy when they pass through walls into the baby's room, which is like interaural attenuation. Some sound energy gets lost as it passes through the head, but that sound in the baby's room can still be loud enough to get a response. One reason to use the white noise is to try and cover up or soften those sounds that end up in the baby's room. Masking is just like putting enough noise in to keep our non-test ear sleeping in its crib instead of waking up and responding to sound coming from a nearby room, which in this case is our test ear. When we turn on that masking noise, how much should we put in? Well, we know the level where the non-test ear would respond. It's here at the threshold. So let's go to the air conduction threshold of the non-test ear, and we'll add a little bit of cushion just to be sure we're really covering up that ear. Most instructors suggest that a 10 dB safety pad is good enough to make sure. Now we definitely should be covering up the non-test ear at their threshold, and this is called the initial masking level or the starting masking level. We present the stimulus and we get a response. Well, maybe our safety pad just wasn't quite big enough. Could this still be the right ear responding? We can make sure by just continuing to raise the level of the masker. We'll present, go up 5 dB and then we'll present again and we still get a response. So maybe this is the true threshold. Let's check two more times just to be sure. And now that we've confirmed that even with a very high masker level, we're still getting a response, we can feel more confident that there is no way the right ear is responsible for that response. This must truly be the left ear threshold. Now we'll go over to 8,000 Hertz and do the same thing. Let's put masking in the non-test ear air conduction threshold. We'll add our 10 dB safety pad just to feel more confident that we're covering up that ear's threshold. We present and we don't get a response. Why? Because it turns out that before we started masking, the patient responded because they heard the left ear air conduction threshold in their right ear by bone conduction. So we played the song too loud in the living room and we woke up the baby. Now we've turned on the white noise machine on high enough to keep the baby from responding so we don't get a response at this level from the left ear. If the left ear isn't responding, we want to increase the stimulus level until it does. So we go up 5 dB and we present and we don't get a response. We're still masking effectively in that right ear and we're not at the left ear threshold yet. Up another 5 dB and bam, we get a response. But hang on, we've only we've raised the level now by 10 dB. So could this just be loud enough so that the right ear is responding? If we leave the level of the white noise machine the same but turn up the TV, we could get loud enough that the baby still wakes up in response to the noise from the other room. So we need to increase the level of our masker again to make sure that this response is truly coming from the left ear and not the right. We'll go up one time, they respond two times, we still get a response, three times, and we still get a response. Sometimes people recommend four times or four masker increases just to be sure. This is what people are talking about when they say they want a 15 to 20 dB plateau before saving the threshold. They want you to raise the masker level three to four times to make sure that there's no way the response is coming from the non-test ear. Especially for air conduction, it's one easy way to prevent needing to mask is by making sure that you use the right transducers. In the class simulation program and in real life, you can use insert earphones, which result in a much higher interaural attenuation than super aural or circum aural earphones. 
keeping with our analogy we have going, it, it would be like soundproofing the baby's room so that sound from the other room gets attenuated a lot more before entering the child's room. If less sound makes it to that non-test ear, you don't need to worry about it interfering with your responses in the test ear as often. Well, that's it for this video. If you want to keep learning about masking, look out for the next video in this series. If you like what you see, please like this video or hit subscribe so I can keep bringing you good content. Thanks a bunch and I'll see you next time.